Hello there YouTube, this is NecroStevo and it's time for us to do our team builder for week 5 of season 4 in Division 1 of the Pokemon Premier League. Now we're coming into week 5 off of yet another fantastic battle and victory. So for this battle matchup we're going up against Shroom Raver and his Parasect Germain. Uh, I definitely consider Shroom Raver one of my um, bigger rivals in the league because of course he was one of the players that was here when we first started in the league in season two and we always seem to have pretty interesting matches with him now major props for him this time for picking up Mega Venusaur in his draft while that is something that I love to battle with not something that I like to battle against um, I did really like my team's matchup against his team he doesn't really have much for Garchomp and Weavile, and I am definitely going to take advantage of that. On his team, things that are very annoying are the possibility of something like a Scarf Excadrill. Uh, Mega Venusaur, just his bulk is going to be something that I have to wear down. And then, surprisingly, Electros is actually pretty hard for my team to handle. Uh, Electros can carry a variety of coverage moves, plus being an electric type with Levitate means that it has no weaknesses, so I'm kind of forced to wear it down or in some cases sacrifice something just to make sure that I can get a KO on it. I also have to be careful of him using Ninjask in this battle and Baton passing speed to the likes of Excadrill or Tyrantrum uh, to a lesser extent Meloetta. All of them uh, can run through my team if they get plus two speed and that can be very scary and that's why we have Weavile here for sure and um, and that's why I have the walls that I have for sure. But let's go ahead and go through the team. Up first we have Golbat returning with the max HP. Um, why is Showdown messing with my EVs like this, yo? Um, returning with a lot of HP and defensive investment, rather. Uh, I really don't understand why it keeps doing this to my EVs. It's like how I will watch uh, Robotnik is sexy and he has the same issue. Anyways, though, it's still a great tool. But with these EVs, even a Jolly Tyrantrum, if he brings like a Choice Scarf one, can't KO Golbat with Head Smash. Granted, Golbat can't do a lot back, but if I can whittle him down, it makes him very easy to KO with a Life Orb Weavile. Uh, I do have Sludge Bomb and Heat Wave yet again, because that literally hits everything on his team for at least neutral except for the Tyrantrum, which I have plenty of things for. Uh, Defensive Golbat is also nice on the off chance he tries to bring a physical Greninja or a physical Electros. Um, especially like a Scarf physical Greninja. Since I don't have to worry about him changing his typing with Protean, I can just get off nice sludge bombs on it. And after the nasty plot, then I can at least hit him for relatively hard damage. I do have the ability to set up here on something like Florges if he lacks Psychic. I can set up on Mega Venusaur if he doesn't have, um, even if he has Knock Off, that's really all he can do to Golbat. Um, Golbat is also going to be a great way to scout what type of, uh, if he happens to bring Ninjask, what type of Ninjask it is, because Ninjask can't really touch Golbat. But his ability to pass the speed out to something else could be annoying. Um, and an Adamant Excadrill has a chance if it's life orb to two it kill me with rock slide but the roll is in my favor so um go is going to be pretty instrumental here and i do need to preserve its knockoff fortunately he only has two pokemon really the venusaur and the, um electros that really are going to run knockoff he could run it on his hitmontop or the greninja too but i don't really see that happening our next teammate is going to be one of our win conditions which is volcarona Volcarona in this game is going to be interesting because early game I'm going to use it as a wall breaker because his only switch into it is really Tyrantrum and if I can wear Tyrantrum down that means Weavile can easily KO it later although I have to be careful of the Yachi Berry. Uh, we went with Fire Dance, I'm sorry, Fire Blast, Psychic, Bug Buzz, and Quiver Dance because those moves hit his entire team. Um, Quiver Dance is really going to be if I happen to have Volcarona in against Meloetta or if I manage to get it in against Hitmontop and I confirm that he doesn't have rock coverage. Uh, I can also bring it in against Florges and set up too. I don't want Volcarona to get paralyzed though, that would be pretty annoying. Uh, Volcarona can also set up against the Mega Venusaur but there's a higher probability that he carry Hidden Power Rock because he knows that I'm bringing Volcarona of course. 
but uh, I am just going to go ahead and go max speed here, just in case he tries baton passing speed to something. I, I want to be able to outspeed those options if they happen to be more defensive, or if I get a quiver dance, I don't have to worry about him, um, you know, getting the plus two with Ninja Ask and then passing it to Fortress or something like that and then setting up on me. I don't know. But the, uh, the Psychic is really just there for Venusaur and the Tyrantrum. I could have put on Energy Ball, but that is lackluster coverage against everything but the Greninja, which gets hit by the Bug Buzz. Uh, Fire Blast hits everything else. So, um, yeah, Volcarun is a pretty straightforward build for this week. Up next we have Primeape. Have to go Jolly this week. I was a little bit disappointed by that, but in order to outspeed a possible Choice Scarf Excadrill, of course, who has base 88 speed, or Choice Scarf Meloetta, who has base 90 speed, I have to go with the Jolly nature. Adamant just won't let me get fast enough. A close Combat Gunk Shot Earthquake hits his entire team for at least neutral to super effective damage. Um, U Turn is just there for keeping momentum on my side. I do think I'm going to be spamming close combat unless he happens to bring Mistrevis. And I don't think he's going to mean bring Mistrevis at all. Um, just because of the Weavile. And if you watch my last team builder, I ran Punishment on Prime Ape. Blastoise can get uh, Dark Pulse. Um, it just doesn't seem like that's worth his time to try to bring that option. Uh, Prime Ape is going to be a fantastic lead. I doubt he'll lead with Florges, so I can outspeed any of his other Scarfers, bar a Scarf Greninja. And if he brings Scarf Greninja, it really lacks the power to KO Prime Ape in one hit, and I can kill it with a, uh, with a uh, close combat. So um, it is also nice that if he brings in Intimidate Hitmontop, I will get the Defiant boost from that too. So um, I'm gonna get to play around with a few things there. I will need to keep Prime Ape healthy and save it just in case he has Scarf Tyrantrum. Without Primeape, it does allow him to run through my team a good bit more with that. Granted, I have Weavile, but I don't necessarily want to use Weavile for that because then I'm basically sacrificing it unless Tyrantrum is at right around 70% HP. So uh, that's a nice secondary check to that. The next teammate, I'm actually pretty proud of this set here. Um, Mirror Coat Blastoise. Uh, did I get the... It changed my nature this time. Okay. Well then. It's going to be a Calm Blast toys, and I was fortunate enough to breed this because uh, Aurasphere and Miracote are both egg moves. So, kind of had to go pull out my level 100 Corsola from the retiree box and put uh, Miracote on there. But, uh, yeah. Rapid Spin, Scald, Aurasphere, Miracote. Scald and Aurasphere hit his entire team, except for the Mega Venusaur. And if Mega Venusaur is here, barring a max special attack invested Leaf Storm, which if he's max special attack invested, he won't be nearly as bulky and that'll be a lot easy to, easier to handle. But uh, a Leaf Storm has a chance, it's a roll to kill me at max HP, um, assuming I get Stealth Rock damage. But everything else, I live 100% of the time and a Mirror Coat smacks him up. So the, the Calm Nature is just to ensure that I can even live an Energy Ball. Um, and I put the Defensive Investment on there in case he tries to run like an, a Scarf Adamant Excadrill. Then I can live two Earthquakes from that as well. The extra speed is just to hit the 101 speed tier in case he tries to not run any speed on some Pokemon or if he runs really bulky Mega Venusaur. Maybe I can get a hit off on it with Scald, who knows. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I'm pretty happy with this Prime Ape. It can also use Miracle against Florges. I don't think he'd see that coming either. And that's really my best way to hit Florges because my Skull's not doing too much without investment. Um, if he happens to bring a special Greninja, opportunity there as well. I have to be careful about when I use um, Miracle though, because Venusaur of course gets options like Leech Seed and Sleep Powder. Florges can set up Calm Mind and Heal Bell and Wish and all that good stuff or synthesis and uh, Greninja can even set up toxic spikes so I have to be careful about when I use it because I don't want to reveal it too early uh, but even if he gets a boost or something like that with some of his Pokemon I should be able to handle that now Garchomp is going to be yet another one of my lead my possible lead Pokemon uh, with Swords Dance, Earthquake, Dragon Claw, and Stealth Rock once again just max, H max attack max speed uh, Garchomp is really here to rip holes and things so that Weavile can clean up later. 
If I can get up the stealth rocks, fantastic. If I'm unable to, he has a pretty reliable way to remove them between uh, the hip on top there, and uh, well, that's his only real reliable way to move to remove them rather. But uh, outside of that, if I well, he he can remove them with Excadrill too. I don't think he put that option on Excadrill for this battle rather. But uh, if I can get them up, excellent. If not, I really just want to punch holes in things. I decided to go with the Focus Sash on the off chance that he starts off with a Greninja. I don't really have a great switch into Greninja because he can carry coverage, and I want to keep my Blastoise healthy. So in that circumstance, I really just go for um, just a Dragon Claw or maybe Earthquake. I, if he doesn't bring Electros, wonderful. I'm pretty sure he's going to bring it, uh, and I can't really spam Earthquake until I get rid of Electros. After Electros has gone, though, wow, field day. I love it. In the final slot, we have Weavile going with... Um, why is this thing is getting on my nerves because it's not it didn't save my sets it didn't update my things this is supposed to be a level 50 for example uh doing this one handed is hard okay and then also instead of pursuit i did change that to swords dance on weavile just because he really really struggles to switch into a plus two or even just a regular life or weavile uh with that speed investment i am guaranteed to outspeed greninja by one point and grab a little bit of special bulk for my trouble. Everyone seems to forget that Weavile has base 85 special defense, and that does allow him to take a lot of weaker hits, um, which is very nice. Now, the Life Orb here is very important. It allows me to do, if he happens to bring an offensive Mega Venusaur, then we're actually doing pretty decent damage to it. Um, without the Life Orb, I can't really one-hit KO Tyrantrum. Um, barring any type of bulk investment and also with a life orb I can KO him from around 70 HP uh, It also allows me to secure a one-hit KO on almost everything else on his team that is weak to uh, dark such as Meloetta, Mistrevis, any of those guys uh, I do have to take out Hitmontop before I use Weavile. That's the main thing. Granted, I have Two maybe three solid switches to Hitmontop even if he has Stone Edge, it's not going to do anything to Golbat. So I'm pretty happy with that um, matchup right there. If I'm able to set up a Swords Dance and uh, some of his Pokemon are worn down, Weavile wins the game. So, uh, barring Greninja. And even then, Greninja can't one hit KO Weavile. So he's really banking on a Skull Burn there. And even with the Skull Burn, I can still really hurt. It does like 97% with a plus two Icicle Crash. Um, and then after a Skull Burn, it might, you know, it's going to do right around. Um, what 70 60 percent something like that so very very impressed with Weavile's matchup this week that's the team guys I hope you enjoyed the team builder uh, we're gonna get right into the match I haven't battled him yet of course I always try to record these beforehand and um, yeah I hope you guys did enjoy the team builder and I'll talk to you guys in a little bit hold on now hello there YouTube this is Necro Steve again and thank you for watching my team builder if you did if you didn't, we're actually just about to get into the battle. This is going to be a live commentary this time, which uh, is mainly due to, um, I think he couldn't get anyone to generate his team for him. So uh, this is a nice fallback. I definitely like playing my bread Pokemon more, but I can't deny how useful of a tool Showdown is for situations like these. So uh, yeah, I have my battle music going here still worth fighting for in the background here to start things off and then it's going to kind of roll through some final fantasy and persona and undertale and all that good stuff but uh, we are i'm just going to kind of uh i'm going to actually cut it until it gets back to him accepting the confirmed game here so we'll be back in a little bit okay so we are back and we can see that he actually did not bring the electros which was the main thing that i was actually worried about so i am not gonna lie i'm pretty excited about that <clears throat> he did decide to bring the Mysterious, which uh, I didn't expect him to bring at all. Have to kind of scout out to see what to expect there. Weavile can smack it really hard, but it won't kill it if it's a defensive set. I just need to um, kind of be on the lookout for that. He's probably, either he's going to lead off with Venusaur to get the Mega event immediately, or Excadrill. I could also see a Greninja lead here too. The other ones are all not really great leads. Um, but it is nice, because that means my Scarf Primeape outspeeds his entire team, barring Scarf Greninja. Which, based on this team uh, that he kind of has here, I don't think that's a Scarf Greninja. 
So uh, we're just going to lead with Primeape in this scenario. Um, and then I can click a U-turn against most of his team. Although the temptation to lead with Garchomp is pretty great too. Um, let's see here. With Garchomp I can click Stealth Rocks against everything. And I can also Earthquake everything that he has here too. Except for the Mischievous. So actually Garchomp might not be bad either because it'll kind of force him into spinning too. So, hmm. Um... Oh, and if you need a, if you didn't watch the team builder, of course we have a nasty plot Golbat, Cobra Dancing, uh, Volcarona, Scarf Primeape, uh, specially defensive Blastoise, um, Sash, uh, Garchomp, and the uh, Swords Dance um, Weavile. So we are just going to start off with Garchomp. I think I have an opportunity to get up my rocks nice and early. Uh, if he leads with his um, Excadrill, that could be annoying. But we're just going to start Garchomp. He actually leads with Greninja. Uh, I'm pretty tempted to just click Earthquake here because I think he's going to Ice Beam me. Um, darn it. If I had led with Primate, that would have been great. Although that basically would have baited him, the Meloetta. Um, I don't think... Let's see here. If he's Greninja, say he's a special attacker. I don't think he can... I think he has to go for Ice Beam if he wants to. KO me here. I could just go straight for rocks too, but the uh, idea of picking off Greninja this early is pretty nice. Um, if Miss Drivus comes in, and it happens to be a defensive set, I do need to know how much damage I can expect to kind of do to that too, I guess. Um, let's go down to my Garchomp set. Bam! Okay. Mm, I'm just going to click Earth. Well, he doesn't really have a switch in to the If I go for a Dragon Claw, that's not going to do that much anyway, though, I don't think. Uh, and it'll do 35. I think Earthquake is a play here, though. If he goes for a U-turn, that'll be nice, too. I'll get off some chip damage on him with the rough skin. So if he had a Sash, I'll break it. Okay, timer's fine. I don't mind that. But yeah, I was really looking forward to this battle. I prepped for it for a while, and I was pretty pleased that I didn't have to... I only had to really breed one more Pokemon, and I just had to go back and change some EVs on my other ones. So, um, that's always nice because the, sometimes when I have to breed completely new sets, it really puts the, uh, the limits on what I need to, um, I guess prepare for as far as, okay, I need to have this amount of time to, to breed. Now he's probably going to go out into Miss Drivis or Hitmontop here. Either one would be fine. If he goes out into Hitmontop, I can put up my rocks. Uh, if he goes out to the Mischievous, he'll dodge the EQ and then I will need to switch right out and I'll probably Golbat. Um, let's see what he goes for. He does go on to Mischievous, which is fine. I kind of expected that. Um, unfortunately, he did break my Sash, though, which is kind of annoying. Uh, he might just go for a Will-O-Wisp here. Um, Mischievous can also go for Foul Play. Uh, I don't... I think Will-O... Uh, well, no. I think Mischievous actually does get Power Gem. I know Miss Magius does. Um, I need to actually check that. I don't know if Mischievous gets that or not. Because, um, of course, Power Gem would be a pretty solid um, rock coverage move to use and I don't really want to bring in Volcarona into that situation if I don't have to um, but yeah it does get power gem so I have to be aware of that I think here I kinda just want to to go directly out into my Blastoise no um, he could also just go for a Will-O-Wisp here which would be annoying hmm I think he might just go for a Will-O-Wisp. If he's just going to go for a Will-O-Wisp, then really Golbat is the best play, because then I'll help me dodge sleep from Venusaur later on, too. Uh, granted, I can't do that much back to him unless I get up to, like, plus four with Golbat, so that might be too passive. Hmm. But Golbat, I really don't want Blastoise getting burned, honestly, either. Um... Yeah, I think he's just going to Will-O-Wisp. Hmm. Okay. So yeah, let's just go out into... Will-O-Wisp seems really, really obvious, so the, the play is to go out into Volcarona. But if he goes for the rock power there, rather, that's going to be a problem. Oh, man, this is tough. Uh, 
Golbat is a nice middle of the road play, so we're gonna go with that actually. What does he go for? He does go for Wolowus. Ah, painful. I could have gone into Volcarona there. That's okay though, because now I just get to click Nasty Plot. If he has, he can go back into Greninja. He could also get into Tyrantrum, but he also doesn't know what coverage I have right here either. Um, in fact, I imagine he would. He could hard switch into Tyrantrum or the Excadrill right here. Um, both of which Primate can take on. I don't think he's going to go for another Will-O-Wisp, though. I could go into Primate and then you turn out into... I'm really surprised he didn't bring Florges. That makes Primate's uh, coverage here kind of pointless. It could have gone for Punishment here and, and had a little bit better coverage. Um, hmm. Yeah, let's double to Primate and see what he actually does here. Oh, he went for Taunt. Interesting. Um, so I'm just going to U-turn out now. Kind of just see what he does. I don't... Interesting that he went for a Taunt. So he was he might have been expecting the Nasty Plot Golbat then. In that situation. But it's good to know his moves now. will o -Wisp, Taunt. He might have Shadow Ball for good neutral coverage. And then... Um, power Gem if he wants to hit my Volcarona. I really need to see if he has the Power Gem or not. So here, actually, we're going to U-turn and go out into... Um, he's he's got to want to burn Primate, I'm assuming, or just get off damage, maybe. Uh, how much does my Volcarona set do to a defensive? Let's see. Oh, wow, Fire Blast is a 2 KO. If he happens to have Power Gem, that shouldn't KO me. Oh wow, Power Gym does a lot of damage, but it doesn't KO me. So I can go right out into Ember Eyes and go for... Um, and then maybe even double again, just to see if he has it. So yeah, let's try it. We're going to go out into Ember Eyes this turn. Because I didn't make that switch before, so... Aha, he tries for the will -O again, so we get it in this time, which is good. Um, Psychic's only going to do 38 damage to him. Really, I feel like I should Quiver Dance. Does a plus one Quiver Dance KO everything that he has, though? I mean, wow. Does a plus one Fire Blast or... That does not take out the... Uh, that's not going to take out Tyrantrum, I'm pretty sure. Even at plus one, if he has any type of bulk. Um, I'm also happy to not see the uh, Ninjask. That means I don't have to worry about him passing around attacks. Or rather, passing speed and substitutes around. A plus one psychic can actually take out Tyrantrum, which is pretty nifty. I feel like I should just go for Quiver Dance here. That way, if he does have Power Gem, I can dodge the um, the unnecessary extra damage from that. Uh, how much is that going to do to hit him on top? I should check that out too, especially if he happens to have like a weird um, bulky kind of set going on, which is what I'm assuming he would bring. Really wish I had set up my Stealth Rocks earlier, because that would have been prime. Uh, okay, so now it's best to just go for Quiver Dance here. Um, the only thing he could have for that is a Scarf Greninja. In which case, I should just go for the attack, though. Yeah, let's just go for the Quiver Dance. Okay, so he is going to stay in. He goes for Taunt now. So great, so now Volcarona basically gets a kill with Fire Blast. Um... I am curious, do I have to go for Fire Blast here to get a kill? Okay, so Fire Blast isn't even a guarantee kill. So yeah, I do have to go for Fire Blast here. So we're just going to go straight for it. I do pick up the kill on Mischievous, which is awesome because now my Prime Ape can just run around on his team. So if he goes into Greninja now, I'm assuming it's Scarfed, basically. Uh, so I do need that information. And I saw a U-turn already, so if it's Scarfed, it might be Scarf Physical. But then Golbat basically walls the set if it's Scarf Physical. So I'm okay with that. Uh, he could also go out to Tyrantrum right now. Um, but that wouldn't help him at all because I can carry on with the Psychic now that I'm at plus one. Uh, he could go out into Hitmontop. That gets KO'd by a Psychic as well. So does Venusaur. He can make some interesting doubles if he's expecting the Psychic. Um, and if he's also Choice Scarf Excadrill, that gets outsped as well. So I have to be careful. He might also have berries on something like Excadrill could have. Um... Uh, berry to to weaken the fire type attack um, 
Hitmontop could even have like, uh, I think it's the Pyapa Berry that we can Psychic type attacks. So I kind of have to be aware of those options on his end too. Uh, if the Greninja happened to have been um, Sash, the Sash is already broken too. But I'm thinking just because he let off with it, it was scarfed. We need some more hype music than this. Let's go to uh, let's go to Blinded by Light Final Fantasy. That'll be good. I'm actually curious if you guys have any battle music that you listen to. Leave the names of those in the in the comments for this video, so I can add some cool things to my um, music list because that'll be pretty cool. Uh, but it is nice to get Mischievous out of the way. Primate can he can one hit KO. Tyrantrum, Excadrill, and Greninja. And if I get prior damage on Venusaur, Gunk Shot is a very easy to hit KO. Uh, I don't have to worry about anything else getting burned too, which is also pretty nice. But I think I got out of that situation as best as I could with just Golbat being burned, which also makes me happy that I don't have Brave Bird because I was thinking about bringing Brave Bird. Uh, but he does just go straight for Venusaur, which um, I'm curious why is he gonna make a double to Greninja? That's what I would do if I were him. Um, let's see here. If he's a defensive Mega Venusaur, because if I can just go for Bug Buzz here and not risk the Psychic, I am definitely going to do that. Uh, Bug Buzz cannot KO, and Psychic only has uh, a very slim chance to KO on a defensive Venusaur. So really. Um, so really, Fire Blast is still my best move, but I don't really want to miss that. Nothing kills. Um, Psychic has a chance to kill if he's like max HP with a lot of special defensive investment. Um, hmm. I feel like he's going to double out here or do something different. Because Venusaur, there's no reason for him to sacrifice his Venusaur like this. Unless he's just trying to see if I have Psychic. Um, so even if I... So I'm going to go for Psychic here, and if he brings in Greninja, I can actually just double back into something else. Um, okay, so he's definitely bulky. Wow. He has Knock Off, so there goes my Life Orb, which is annoying. I lose a lot of damage output with that. But this is also not terrible, because now I can go for Bug Buzz to finish him off. And if he switches out to Greninja, that'll go down too. Um, I wish my Taunt would end. That would be great. If the taunt went in, then I could have actually set up another Quiver Dance right there, so that saved him a good bit. Because if I had been able to set up another Quiver Dance, that would have been a good game. I'm pretty sure. Because nothing can live from plus two range, rather. But I really like the Psychic Damage there. It, it didn't make sense to risk anything else. Actually, seeing the Psychic Damage, since it only did 74%, um, he actually is probably a Calm Venusaur, I'm pretty sure. Calm... That's sad. Yeah, because either that was a very specially defensive Venusaur, um, and I got a low roll, or that was a uh, much more um, offensive Venusaur, and I got a high roll. One of the two. But let's see here. Greninja's and I feel like I should just go out in the gold bat and save my Volcarona just in case here. He wouldn't have brought it in like this unless it were scarfed, I'm pretty sure. Um... Alternatively, if he goes for a U-turn again, expecting me to switch out, I don't think he can afford to do that because he kind of has to go straight for the water move here. Or the rock type move if he has that. Uh, I'm pretty sure though my Blastoise can take both of those options. Man, I don't even get a chance to use Miracle because all, all he has are physical attackers. But we're going to go straight into Golbat because I'm pretty sure he's a physical Greninja, like I said before. He's going to go straight for Scald, so he's a mixed Greninja. Definitely was not expecting that. Um, I'm just going to try to click Roost here to see what he has. Uh, and if he just keeps on going for a Scald, I am going to assume he's Scarfed and makes Greninja. But he switches out into his Excadrill. We see Mold Breaker, so he's not going to try to set up his own Sandstorm or anything. And I don't really... I could go for Nasty Plot, but since I'm burned, I don't have the longevity I really want to have. So we're just going to put Excadrill in range of Ice Shard from Weavile, is what we're going to do right here. Even if he has Stone Edge, that can't KO me from this range, unless he gets a critical hit. Um, so... I also need to see if the Excadrill is Scarfed, too, although I don't have any speed investment on my Golbat. But if he's like some weird bulky set, my Golbat will outspeed. So that's good to take note of as well. I'm going to change this music over one more time. And Persona this time, oh yeah. Now what I'm expecting here is just for him to go for a Rock-type attack, 
Oh, he went for Earthquake, expecting a double of some sort. I don't have a reason to switch out, sir. I'm just going to go straight for Heat Wave. Um, I also could have Roosted there. But since... Hmm. He, I think he predicted a Switch, is what I would guess. He either predicted a Switch or a Roost. Uh, but I didn't really have a reason to do that. What what range do I need to put him in for Weavile's Ice Shard in case he's Scarfed? If he's Scarfed, though, he's going to switch out right here for sure. Um, I'm not actually sure. Let's see. I have 80 seconds left, so I have a little bit of time. Oh, I cannot type when I'm this far away from my keyboard. All right. There's my gold bat set. Up against... Let's see. Okay. I think the best move here is just to go for another Heat Wave, honestly. Because uh, then I can live any hit and then go for a Roost on the next turn if needed. He sets up his Stealth Rocks, which is really annoying. I'm going to have to bring in Blastoise to spin those away. Uh, but he is faster than me, so that does give me a free Roosting opportunity, which is nice too. I feel like my timer deteriorates really, really quickly for some reason. Um, I am able to roost and get my health back to a very, very nice range. Uh, hmm. Oh, and nicely, since the Miss Maggie is, uh, I'm sorry, the Miss Drebus is gone, I actually have the opportunity to spin a lot more freely here, too. Uh, I don't see, he could go into, I'm afraid of him going into Tyrantrum and trying to set up a Dragon Dance. But even with that, he can't, uh, I can still outspeed him with Primate, and then he also can't one-hit KO my, um, my, uh, yeah, he can't one-hit KO anything. So I'm, I'm actually going to go for Nasty Plot here, expecting a switch. He does switch. Okay, well, I didn't think he'd go straight to it like that, unfortunato. Uh, I don't really have a good way to hit it, so we're going to try to Sludge Bomb here. Let's see what he does. I really should have gone for the Roost there. I thought he was just going to stay in with the Excadrill and keep on attacking. But, uh, that is annoying. So let's see actually what he goes for here. I, if I... Okay, he misses the head smash, which sucks, but I also, wow, that did a lot more damage than I expected it to do. Um, Golbat can actually live a head smash from full HP, so if I had roosted, I would have had a chance to live it, but I didn't roost, so I just got a, uh, a free bit of damage off there, which is actually pretty important just for me being able to bring in my Weavile on the Tyrantrum. And I'm going to assume he is Choice Scarfed until I know otherwise. So I think I can actually go out to Weavile here. Bam. And, oops, that's level 60. Uh, Ice Shark can do right around 56%, so he's actually not low enough yet. That's fine. I can go out into Blastoise and spin. Because uh, he's not going to be able to one-hit KO Blastoise with anything. Mega Evolution. And go for the... Well, I could also just go straight for a Scald here, actually, which might be a better play. No, well, mm, I want to keep Volcarona to be able to come back on the field, so we're going to spin. And I'll also be able to see what type of Tyrantrum he is based on the damage, so. Well, bam. Now, I do think he's just going to keep on spamming Head Smash from this point. Uh, I also could have gone into my um, Primeape and immediately threatened the Choice Scarf, but I don't think he knows that I'm Choice Scarf yet, so there's no reason to reveal that, unless I really have to. Because uh, otherwise, he might play a little bit more freely with his Greninja if he doesn't think that I'm Choice Scarf Primeape. Although he might, that's basically what I've brought on Primeape every time. But Primeape does get some interesting options outside of just Choice Scarf. It's just a lot of my opponents kind of have slept on Choice Scarf Primeape, so why not bring that option? He is going to switch out, though, which is awesome. He switches into this sucker. Uh, I get a free Mega Evolution, and I this is nice because I'm going to be able to force him to put back up the rocks. Uh, or I just get off a free Scald right here, actually. Um, or Spirit might be a better move in trade. No, I like this. That's why we click Scald, right? The burn chance. Um, he just goes for Earthquake. That does a little bit more than I expected. He's probably adamant. I get a nice crispy crit there to make up for the, uh, the non-hacks that I've gotten before in this battle. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say there. <laughs> that was odd. Um, but this is nice because no more rocks means Volcarona can come back to the field. He obviously didn't want his Tyrantrum to take any prior damage, so I think that Tyrantrum is Scarfed because now it has a chance to KO me with Head Smash. 
uh, what kind of chance are we looking at here? And depending on if he has coverage on, let's see here, bam. I do need to know if he can KO my blast toys with a head smash or not. Mm -hmm. Forty-four. With the calm nature. Okay, so he has a really good chance to KO me with the head smash from Tyrantrum. So I'm curious if he's going to go into that option or if he's going to try to go to hit him on top or something. I feel like if he goes to anything but hit him on top, I get a free hit off. Because if he goes into Greninja, I can just go for Mirror Coat. I cannot go for Mirror Coat, actually, because Greninja would be a dark type and it wouldn't work. So, but here I can actually go for Aura Sphere in case he doesn't KO me. Um, and he does, okay. So I'm pretty sure he's Scarfed. That's okay, though, because I can just go into my Primeape. And now he has to contend with the Terror that is going to be this close combat. So, and I really like the ability to make a, a fast switch. Um, and not rely on Wi-Fi to take a little bit. Because when you make fast switches, you can, or if you take your time, actually, and deliberate, you can make it seem like you're, okay, I'm trying to think about my options here, that type of deal. But here, it's nice, because if he goes into Hitmontop, I get a Defiance boost. If he goes into Greninja, it dies. If he stays in with the Tyrantrum, it dies. So as long as I keep um, my uh, Primate relatively healthy, I think I have him in a little bit of a check position. We're not in checkmate yet, just because I only know two of the moves on his Greninja. But uh, I do like the position I'm in. If I were him, I think he really has to let Tyrantrum go down here and then go into Greninja. Because if he goes to hit him on top and he has Intimidate, that's not going to work out too great for him. Unless he predicted that and he went with Technitop instead. Although if he had Technitop, I feel like he would have used it already, honestly. Um, I don't know. It'll be interesting to see either way. Now here, uh, if my primate does go down, okay, so I do just outspeed and KO him. So he was scarfed, which is great. Uh, so primate's able to take down the Tyrantrum. Let's make a note of that. And he does go into Greninja, so I'm guessing that this is this might be scarf too, actually. Then uh, I don't think. I don't think Primate is as useful now that the Tyrantrum has gone down, so I can actually let my Primate go down here and then go into my... He could have Low Kick, though. Hmm. But if, if he's Scarfed, he'll outspeed me and I'll see what he's locked into. If he's not Scarfed, then I KO him right here. So let's see. He is Scarfed. He's locked into Extra Sensory, and that means I get a free switch into my Weavile. And I'm actually going to go for... Um, I think I need to go for Swords Dance right here. I'm pretty sure. Uh, also could have gone into my... No, I think I need to go for Swords Dance. I need to see how much a minus one... I mean a plus one, sorry. Uh, Icicle Crash will do to the Hitmontop. Because that's basically the damage that I'll be looking at there. So let's see. I'm going to just assume he's a defensive Hitmontop of some sort. And why is my stuff so weird? Okay, so I can do around 75% to him, so that's not bad at all. Yeah, we're just going to go straight for the sword stance here. Um... Hmm. Or I can go straight for Icicle Crash, but that's not going to do very much to him on top, honestly. But I'm pretty sure he's locked in here. And I will have the chance to flinch, too. So, you know, Swords Dance is definitely my best play. Him on top comes in and gets the Intimidate. And I'll hit the Attack Boost. If for some reason he's not, um... He could have Mock Punch. I forgot to think about that. Crap. Uh... Hmm. He could have Mock Punch. If he has Mock Punch, I really need to switch out to my 
Volcarona. I feel like he has to have the Mach Punch. I didn't think about that until after I clicked it. Okay. Uh, I could risk it and go straight for Icicle Crash, but that's not going to KO him if he's max defense anyway. Um, and I could just go straight to Volcarona and take any attack except for a fighting type attack too. Which I think that's what I want to do here. Because then I can save Weavile to force him into kind of a 50-50 game with Greninja. Um, so let's go ahead and double back. And let's see what he goes for. He does have the Mach Punch. It doesn't do very much. Now I just get to go for... Uh, I could go for Psychic, but he could bring in the Greninja and really need to get more extra damage on that. So Fire Blast might be my best play, but I might miss. Uh, and he also might have the Rock Coverage move, which would suck. Without my Life Orb, I can't one-hit KO this Pokemon, I'm pretty sure. Um, let me just take off the Life Orb here. I don't understand this timer. It degenerates so quickly and weirdly. Um, Psychic is my safest move, though. Even if he goes back to Greninja, he's going to have to pick a move. Um, I'm just going to go Fire Blast, because that will hit them both. So let's see what he does here. Okay, so I get some nice solid damage off there. He does have Rock Slide coverage, but that is to be somewhat expected for sure. Um, so now, what does my Weavile look like attacking here when I won't have minus one coming into the situation? Oops. Bloop. Um, so I know I'll definitely outspeed, and it looks like he's right at 50%, so Icicle Crash is a roll. What about, where? what's going on with the battle timer? I'm kind of confused about that. Um, let's see, what about Garchomp? Garchomp should be able to KO with an Earthquake, actually just based on how much damage he took from that other attack. So we're gonna go to Garchomp, which is nice because if he does have to lock in with the move with his Greninja, then he has to choose Ice Beam or something that probably won't hit my Weavile as hard. So I'm kinda gonna bank on that. And just go straight for an Earthquake right here. Kinda see what he goes for. Um, <sighs> It's, it's, this is gonna come down, it might come down to some 50-50s, it depends on if I KO him right here. I would love to KO him with this Earthquake, but uh, I feel like he has to attack, for one. Although if he, if I don't KO him and he hits me, he's gonna go down to Rough Skin, too. Cause it's gonna do around 40% damage, so. If he attacks me, his hit on top should go down here, it really just depends on if he has Ice Punch randomly. Which he could have. Um... And then it'll come down to whether or not he has low kick or I guess power up punch on the Greninja. But uh, I don't know, we're into some interesting 50-50s here. I really need to see what's going on with the battle timer because I wasn't really sure why it wasn't starting at the full amount of time. It was starting at like 80 instead of the full amount of time. It's like the timer was decaying or something, which does remind me a little bit of chess actually. But I don't know, It's it's something where I don't necessarily know the mechanics of that necessarily as much. So we're gonna, I'm, I really, I'm kicking myself for letting that, taking that U-turn really, really on, early on in the game is coming back to bite us here. Because otherwise we'd have the chance to KO and then have the Sash attack, or if I at least had Life Orb, I would guarantee KO him. I get a critical hit, that may have mattered. I had a, uh, hmm, I don't know what his spread was, but that may have definitely mattered. Now here I feel like he has to lock in the Ice Beam if he wants to KO me, which gives Corvo a fantastic time. So let's see what he locks into on the Scarf Greninja, because he is he's a mixed Scarf too. Um, I guess he has to lock in the Ice Beam or go for Scald, hoping for the Burn, are his two options. Uh, I really I need to know his spread to know if that crit mattered though, because if it mattered, that sucked. Um, yeah. Okay, so we're gonna be fingers crossed here to see what he goes for. Oh man, the battle music just got really, really lit. Perfect. Perfect timing for this. Um, he must be thinking, he must be calculating to see if he can KO me with something. I don't, the only thing he can KO me with is Ice Beam. But that loses him the game, because I'm pretty sure I can 2-8 KO him 
with my um, with my Weavile. And especially if he's running a mixed nature, he might be missing special defense or regular defense. So let's just see. I'm gonna assume he's max special attack. We're gonna go against Weavile here. He goes for Scald. Does he get the burn? No burn. And that's going to be a good game. I think... That's interesting. Uh, I could switch out here to say the differential, too. Um, no, there's no sense in risking a crit. So, unfortunately, I have to let Iden go down there. Okay, so we just get to go into Weavile. And if he does happen to get... A crit scald, how much will that do? Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's GG. Because here's the scald. Well, I did a lot of damage. And we just finish him off with a knockoff. Alright. <sighs> Alrighty. Well, thank you very much to the Parasect Germain for that really, really close battle. Really should have clicked Ice Shard at the end there, too. That was a misplay. Um. But, uh, and I, yeah, I, I kind of choked that last little play there. But, you know, why not leave, why not live at 8% and keep it close like that? Good gravy. Okay. All right, guys. So thanks so much for watching, and I will see you next week. I actually don't know. I was so fixated on this match, I don't remember who our next opponent is. I can check really fast, though. Next week is going to be week six, so that means we'll be over halfway through the league. And that's against uh, the Pittsburgh Pyro I have in my notes here. So that's Slyro. So excellent. We'll have that match to look forward to. And I hope you guys have a fantastic day. Bye now.